Hey there, how's it going everybody? So today I'm going to be planting out some mint. I've actually got three different varieties and I'm going to be planting these out in containers today. So I'd highly recommend whenever planting your mint that you do so in containers. Putting it in the ground, uh, mint is invasive. It spreads through its roots or its rhizomes and it can spread quickly and create a real issue in the garden. So if you do plant mint, put them in containers. And with that being said, I would choose a deeper container, something deeper than 12 inches or so. And that's because you don't want any of those roots poking out through the drainage holes and then finding their way back into the ground. So a uh, container that's deeper than 12 inches, a nice wide top because it is going to spread and fill it out, and you're good to go. And mints are perennial herbs, and they will die back in the colder winter months, but come the following spring, they'll reemerge. The roots are actually viable all the way down to Zone 5 USDA Climate Zone. So it's plants like these that I like to refer to as investment plants. A little bit of time and effort, small investment up front, then you get the reward of the plant coming back year after year. And these are the containers I'll be using to plant out the mint. I've got a separate container for each variety of mint. And as you can see, it's nice and deep. It's about a foot and a half deep, almost two feet wide on top. So just perfect for mint. And I'm not just gonna be putting this together in a traditional sense by just filling this up with potting mix and planting my mint out. Instead, what I'm gonna be doing is creating a hugel pot. So a hugel pot or a hugel container is just another form of hugel culture. So we're gonna be putting this together just as you would if you were building either a hugel culture mound or a raised bed hugel culture. What we've got here is some older wood that's had a chance to dry out. We've got some wood chips there, some native soil, and then a bunch of potting mix. And I'll show you how I'm gonna put this together. And these are not the only types of ingredients that you could use to put something like this together. If all you've got is smaller sticks and some leaves and a little bit of straw, that's gonna work just fine as well. So the main idea, as I put all these ingredients together in here, is to create a nice sponge-like core that's gonna work as a water bank or reserve to help retain moisture, whether it gathers that through the winter months, through rain, or just through regular watering. What's gonna end up happening is these little logs and the wood chips are gonna to help to retain that moisture and then release it through a wicking method and bring that up into the soil profile and helping to feed the roots of these plants. And one of the main reasons I really like this container is because there are no holes on the bottom, but instead where you see this crack, that's where the water overflows. So there's actually a little reservoir right down here, which is great because it's gonna allow those wood chunks that I put at the bottom to really do a nice job to wick up any added moisture that gathers at the bottom of the container. And I picked this up over at Home Depot. Uh, really, you could use any type of container. If you've got a plastic container and you're gonna drill some holes in there for drainage, I'd recommend instead of going on the bottom, going on the side about an inch or two up. That way when your sticks and your logs are actually saturated in that little reservoir, it's gonna do a great job wicking it up. And because we have all this loose organic material that we're gonna be building up to about this level, there's still gonna be plenty of drainage for the roots of your plants. Next, I'm going to load up on the wood chips. And this isn't just wood chips. This is bark, leaves, and pine needles. So a nice mixture like this works really well. And in case it's not coming through on the camera, I've left myself about eight inches of space here. I am going to fill it up to the top as once this settles, it is going to sink down at least a couple inches. And the native soil here is where most of the life force is. This is loaded with worms. And the potting mix is really good. It adds more organic material. It's gonna aid in drainage. And over time, as these two break down together, it's gonna to create a really nice humus soil. We'll just blend this up a little bit. For this container, I'm gonna put in the spearmint. Just 
tease those roots out a little bit. Help it to grow out instead of in a circle. And optionally, you can add a little bit of mycorrhizal inoculant if you want to help those roots to really take off. And I'm also going to throw in a little bit of 444 NPK fertilizer. I'm going to water this in really good. And the last thing I'm going to do is to top dress this with a mulch. Uh, that's going to help to further retain moisture into the soil. And I'm going to be using straw. Straw is a wonderful mulch. It biodegrades quickly, adding to the soil profile. And because it's porous, when you water, the water just flows right through, helping to feed the plants. Real quick, I'd like to address a common concern many folks have in regards to gardening with wood chips or adding woody material to a hugel culture. By far the most common question that I get is, doesn't wood deplete nitrogen from the soil? And the answer to that is that if you intermix the wood chips or the wood with the soil, then you are gonna have some nitrogen tie up. That's not depletion, what it is is an imbalance that occurs and eventually as that wood decomposes, it's gonna release that nitrogen back to the soil. So not ideal for growing plants. In the case of wood chips, you're gonna to wanna to use it most of the time as a top dressing of mulch and not intermix it with the soil. And therefore you're gonna have very little, if any, nitrogen depletion. And the same holds true for hugel culture. When you bury those woody products, you're actually piling on top of it lots of soil and compost. So again, there's really nothing to worry about. Now as an insurance policy, you could definitely add a little bit of fertilizer and nitrogen to your hugel culture, your hugel pots, and that'll get you through any rough spots that may occur. And that's it. So this should do a great job reducing the frequency in which I need to water this container. And over time, as the wood breaks down, it's gonna add even more nutrition to this growing medium. So I'm gonna continue on making my next two containers. If this type of gardening interests you, I'd encourage you to check out some of my other videos on hugel culture. I've got an entire playlist dedicated to this style of gardening. I'll include that link below this video. Well, that's gonna do it for now, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll be talking to you again soon. Take care.